And in the 1950s and 60s, you had the British invasion. But, interesting thing, that's wood. But I won't make any jokes about the English and their dental hygiene because mine is not as that great either. But I did just make the joke. See what I did there? KW makes the perfect suspension for every demand. Find them in the description below. What's up, people? Well, today we are going to address a myth that has been around the car world for a long time that involves wood and the Morgan Motor Car Company. Now, a lot of you may say, Casey, I don't even know what a Morgan is, and I don't care if something has wood or not. Well, hold on. Now, I have always found in the car world, doesn't matter whether it's a Porsche, a race car, an Indy car, Corvette, or this very unusual Morgan, it drives me bonkers when just stupid car myths exist. And maybe it's not the myth that's always driven me crazy, but just the absolute rampant misinformation that usually exists because one group of people or type of people like to kind of just be derogatory toward other cars because let's face it, the entirety of the car world is very competitive, be it racing or there's people that like cars. As an example right here, this is a Porsche 944 and this car, is what Porsche people that aren't snobs like. If you are a Porsche snob, you probably like something like a 911 because that's air cooled and that makes you excited and you hate everything else in the world. Or you could be a BMW snob like this gentleman here. You sir, why are you a BMW snob? Because they make the best German cars. They're sports cars. Oh, they're sports cars proper, and the best German cars. Proper sports but, cars with the engine in the proper place. Oh, but, but Porsches don't matter at all. I mean, this is, this is all right. The okay. engine's in the right All right, place. fine. He's just trying to be nice on camera. Total snob. Anyway, Morgan. Uh, this Morgan has always been plagued, the company, by a myth that drove me nuts, that the frames or the chassis are built of wood. We're going to address that. But it kind of made me nutty because also the DeLorean company back in the day, there was a ton of myths about that. And actually, I addressed that in a video before. Uh, if you guys look it up, the thumbnail is a DeLorean. It says wrongly slandered, and I talked about all that. But regarding this and the Morgan, so this particular one was built in 1967. This is a plus four drop head coupe. Plus four designation being that it has the Triumph four cylinder engine in it, which is a bit taller. And the plus four has a body line that's a little bit taller than the 4.4. The 4.4 Morgans of the time were powered by typically like a 1500 or 1600 cc Ford engine with a single uh, camshaft. Now, there was also the plus eights and other derivatives that came. And this one's called a drop head coupe because it's very fancy and luxurious with these suicide dolls and the beautiful princess body lines and all that. But come on over to the back and let's look inside this and talk about the wood aspect. So you can see that this car, even in the mid-1960s, when of course America was building big muscle cars out of steel, yes, and even in racing, such as with Jim Hall's Chaparrales, racing was starting to actually use composites for chassis design. So even in America with the Chaparrales, you had a composite chassis 20 years before Formula One had it as an example. But Morgans stayed true to their roots in building cars like they did in the pre-World War II times. That's why when you look at this car, and camera guy, you can just kind of vibe around here. This Morgan from 1967, when we were already getting ready to go to the moon and breaking the sound barrier like it's no big deal and doing cool skunk work stuff, they were still doing it like it's 1925, which is all right. The English are that way. They're charming cars that stood the test of time. They've done everything from Paris to Peking to fording around, but they're weird, right? And in the 1950s and 60s, you had the British invasion, not only of music, but with cars. Because at the time period, they were cheap and it was easy to import them. And so you got all kinds of British sports cars around, whether that's Triumph or Morgan or loads of MGs, things like that, obviously even Jaguar. And that's also why you see that British car shows were so popular for people of the baby boomer generation because they were young during the British invasion of when these cars were cheap to have in the United States if you like funky little sports cars. And that's a parallel today with all the young people that like the JDM or Japanese import cars, right hand drive, et cetera, and relates to the Fast and the Furious crowd. So for all the boomers that absolutely can't stand the Fast and the Furious crowd, what up boomers? It's exactly the same thing as what you all did just from a different little island somewhere in the world, <laughs> which I think is hilarious. So Morgans, why do, ooh, I'm going to scratch my new watch, doggone it, because I'm a, I'm a goofball. I'm, I'm like Hoovy level goofball right now. But anyway, so I've always heard people, the older generation say, oh, Morgans are made from a wood chassis. Huh? Look out for termites. And usually that comes from people that are into muscle cars, 
uh, or trucks that don't know squat about the cars and they just kind of want to be derogatory because they don't know anything. And they clearly know nothing about it. But I recently heard Jerry Seinfeld make that same joke on his comedians and cars getting coffee. Now, Jerry Seinfeld is an intelligent car guy that's obviously an older generation and been around long enough to know better. But Jerry Seinfeld is also one of the most premier Porsche snobs in the world. So therefore, if the engine's not in the back and he can't have fun talking with a German accent and doing his air-cooled thing, he's not gonna like it. And a Morgan is very funky, but he mentioned it had a wood frame. So let's get down to it. I'm gonna open up the bonnet here and uh, we're gonna start looking at this thing. Does it have a wood frame? Now, as an example, and let me show you, there in fact have been cars and race cars in history that are built with a wooden monocoque chassis. Wood is actually pretty strong. And keep in mind that there were loads of fighter jets or planes in World War II that were built from wood. The Sp Supermarine Spitfire, large amount of wood in that plane and lots of high G. So wood's a good material, but let's look at this. So do we have a wood chassis? Let's just go down in here. Come on down. Looks like steel to me. Yep, also steel, 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 steel. So a Morgan has a, a chassis, you know, a ladder type chassis, very similar to trucks or, you know, uh, old American cars, etc. And it is in fact made of steel. Let's look down here, guys. This is steel, I can put a magnet on it. Here it is, steel chassis. But, interesting thing, that's wood. This is wood right here. Okay, so this is an interesting thing that may lead to the myth, but the actual chassis, which uh, attaches to the leaf springs, which are hidden in the back, and then you have a, in, a live rear axle here, a solid axle. Um, the actual chassis of the Morgan is made from steel. It has the live rear axle and leaf spring rear suspension, and in the front, it has sliding kingpin suspension, which honestly is a lot like the on-road radio control car I had as a kid in, in like the 1980s and early early 90s and there's literally a pillar that slides up and down with a spring at the top and a little spring at the bottom and that's how it works you got to keep that well greased in fact we're going to do that so what we just realized is the morgan has in fact a steel chassis which many people also call a frame but if you notice early in this i called the hood the bonnet mm. so we're t the english have different terms for parts of their car you know the trunk is the boot the hood is the bonnet and the this thing the soft top or the top, the English call that the hood, I think. Yes, that sounds about right. And then they got a bunch of other things like flashlights, a torch, and that's not a stick shift. This is a, hey, Gavin, what do the, what do the Brits call stick shift? Oh, a lever, I don't know, manual, something like that, whatever. So we can't agree, or we can't agree on how many uh, vowels are in the word aluminum, apparently. They think there's an I in there somewhere. But anyway, but there's wood right here. Let's look at that again. Let's start looking at this wood and exploring it. So this is a big vertical plane right here, kind of supports this area. Now this fender is made of steel on this car and this fender is made of steel and, and this is steel, I believe, and steel and steel and a steel bonnet. Now there were Morgans, of course, made out of aluminum and partially aluminum, but let's start looking in the interior. Now, the Morgan is very simple. Let's, let's move this seat farther forward. This seat is a big piece of plywood. I'm not gonna lie, it's a big piece of wood back here. And these screws here, if you wanna look at it, go right into it. So this is a card effectively here, maybe like a, a fiber, that this back piece of leather goes over top and it screws to it. And then the upholstery of the back of this seat, you know, you've got your, your foam and your cushioning and your, your leather upholstery and it gets wrapped around and glued and screwed to this big piece of wood. So the whole back of the seats in this bench seat, there's a big piece of wood in here. But that's not that unusual. That kind of thing exists with many other cars and especially coach building of Europe. Even something more modern like a DeLorean had some wood in it. Even Lotuses have just a little bit of wood in it here and there. So there's really nothing wrong with the material of wood. So let's look over here. We're gonna pull up one of these cushions and see. Now this cushion, literally just a foam cushion. There's nothing to it but the upholstery and the foam. But if we look here, this structure that holds the seat cushion, and I'm not sure if it'll just, it'll come right out or not, that is wood, obviously, okay? You got this um, stretchy trapeze that it sits upon, but this is done like you'd see in a boat or even an early airplane. So obviously there's wood right there. So that's showing you something. Let's set this aside. Now, what else? The floor, if we look at that, if I pull this up, that is wood. 
is a plywood floor, okay? There's some sound editing and such in the front of the restoration and pieces here. The transmission tunnel, um, metal. Cross members, metal. That right there, wood. Inside this, piece of wood, piece of wood. And this, this is the inner fender well. Now this is nicely upholstered, but that is that piece of plywood we saw before. And also, this curved structure here, that is also wood. Now, if you all notice, the structure you see supporting the seats and behind the seats and also the fender wells are wood. So how much more extensively is that used? I'm going to tie my shoe and tell you. Now, interesting thing. If you take a peek at those doors there, camera guy, have a look at the door jams of the door. Now, you guys see that. Obviously, you can see the beautiful trim. I believe it's walnut right here. Very pretty. But here, let's look at this. Now, you have a steel skin and it comes over and folds, and this is steel right here, but these screws here are wood screws. The actual frame of this door that the steel uh, skin goes upon and things attached to is wood, okay? So inside here is wood, and if I'm not mistaken, the English primarily used ash as the wood for building this, and there's wood in here too. And that's a perfectly good material for creating a structure like this. And obviously they have a skin on it and it works. But the Morgans, especially this time, were very handmade, very boutique, very much of the old world. And the Morgan Motor Car Company, if I'm not mistaken, they had their 100 year anniversary a little while back. That's the only car company that was never bought out and it's still owned by the same family for over 100 years. So while Morgan by a car company is kind of small and insignificant on a world manufacturing scale, it's very significant in that that car company could stick around that long and keep true to it. So while in a time period of history 50 years ago, Americans might make fun of the cars because they were behind the times, they stuck with that traditional method for so long, it became something special. And nowadays they have things like the Aero 8, the Aero Max Coupe, and other things that I'm not even familiar with. And they're running BMW drivetrains and more modern suspensions and chassis and less wood. And they make very beautiful cars, more of the modern era and performance. But that shows you. So inside the door is a frame made of wood. Notice I use the word frame. And then also this area here and underneath here and the support for the cowl underneath here, that's ash wood as well. So if you guys can visualize this and maybe go back just enough that you can see the car because I want them to get a big picture and visualize it. So we're looking at the car here, guys. On the bottom is a steel chassis like a ladder. Two basic beams that go forward like this that has some cross members, the suspension attaches to, your drivetrain mounts to, like most other cars in part of history. Then of course you have your metal fenders and called wings. Uh, the radiator shroud, similar to pre-war, you know, your headlights, your hood, your firewall is made of steel and metal here, and the skin and everything goes. That, of course, is generally speaking, metal. But plywood is used for the floorboards, but more specifically, I want you guys to look at the shape. Notice this area here from the cowling with the doors going back, the structure of the inner fender wells, and then right through here. The area here that creates the basic of the cockpit, that's the body. But the framework of the body that supports the metal is wood, ash. And that's where the myth came from with Morgans because people would see pictures or they would start working on it and see wood underneath and somebody would say, well, the body has a wood frame. And then some idiot's like, I think that car is a stupid little English piece of junk. It's got a wood chassis. And then the myth comes out and to where it gets proliferated throughout the years to where even somebody like Jerry Seinfeld is making the joke. Not out of the joke of it just being a joke and saying, hey, that's not true. Uh, I don't think he actually knows that it's not that. And if he does know it, he's basically using the ability to use the word frame and not specify body frame to proliferate misinformation in honestly kind of a derogatory way to the car company because it's funny. So generally speaking, myths get propagated in the automotive world through history. One way, because somebody wants to be derogatory to usually something they don't understand or like, or just because it's funny and other people do that. And that's how you get myths everywhere, whether it's something like Morgan or DeLorean or anything else for that matter. There's even myths that relate to Volkswagen Beetles, obviously being air-cooled and certainly for Porsches and other things like that. Uh, and then of course, stereotypes come with it too but I won't make any jokes about the English and their dental hygiene because mine is not as that great either. But I did just make the joke. See what I did there, Gavin? He's laughing. Would, would, you, would you make a joke about teeth as a BMW aficionado and snob? Or is that, is that beneath you? 
I tend to not go to such snobbery. Really? Because you just did earlier about your Beamer. It's a joke. I'm speaking, oh, with, oh. I'm speaking with the accent. Don't do that. Wait, which accent? German or English? You put me on the spot here, man. I don't know. We're going to make I'm a... I'm speaking with some accent. We're going to make so a... Gonna there's going to be a war joke. We're not very good. It's early in the morning. We're sorry. I don't even have any jokes to make about the English disliking the French. I don't actually know why, and I also don't know why Americans... Now, I'm not going to say that, because now I'm going to get lit up in the comments. Everybody, just be nicer to the French, okay? You know, they have nice things. Pure, pretty art. La Belle Epoque stuff from the past. And pretty things. And you know what? Listen, if they just let the Germans roll in so it doesn't destroy the history in their art, that was smart, because they still got it. They didn't get bombed into the Stone Age. Okay. This has digressed. Anyway, guys, the Morgan Motor Car Company has, in fact, steel chassis. Yes, they are not made of wood. The chassis, or classically, as you call it, frame of the car, is made of steel. Yes. It is the body support structure, or the body frame, that is made of wood and ash. So, I'm sorry you guys don't get to make this joke anymore, uh, but it really annoyed me for a long time, and I thought I'd tell you guys. And I wanted to give the opportunity for a lot of people who see, shall we say, the more modern way to manufacture cars, mass produce, to just have a look inside of Morgan as to what goes into the old world craftsmanship method of building cars that harkens to the between the two world wars, uh, and obviously, as it's generally referred, the pre-war time. So, this beautiful Morgan Drophead Coupe is genius garage, and we're just cleaning up and gussing up a little bit, having some fun. So, I hope you enjoyed this video today. Obviously, subscribe. Please share this if you like it. It's very helpful. Uh, obviously, patronize the sponsors. They're very nice to be able to support this and bring you guys great content. And also, please click the bell down there. It's very important. And if you like anything you see here you want to, commenting is also very helpful. It's helpful. YouTube is a silly place. Comment below. Make it nice. Or say something nasty so that we can fight on the internet. Because that's what the world is about now. Fighting on the internet instead of actually doing anything in the real world. If you agree, comment. If you disagree, comment. See you next time. <laughs> BMWs suck. Well, a huge thank you to Crush Proof Tubing Company. Since 1949 in Macomb, Ohio, they've been manufacturing custom rubber and plastic tubes for every industry imaginable. No tooling or mold costs, fast and free custom samples, and American-made quality is what sets them apart. But for me, I'm most excited about their exhaust evacuation kit. Different modular pieces and their convoluted custom hoses make it so that I can adapt any car, truck, or motorcycle with an internal combustion engine to get those exhaust gases out of my shop so I can keep working in safety and comfort. But beyond just that, they build a variety of hoses for a custom OEM world. You'll see stretchable drain tubing and bellows, as well as agriculture, medical, and military. So again, guys, Crush Proof Tubing Company, crushproof.com, and go down in the description below to see where to get your free samples for industry or your exhaust tubing.